SwiftUI's group is commonly used to work around the 10 child view limit, but it also has another important behavior. It acts as a transparent layout container. And this means the group doesn't actually affect our layout at all, but we can still give us the ability to add SwiftUI modifiers or send back multiple views without using the view builder attribute. For example, we could make a user view up here, struct user view is a view with var body some view, and give this string three text views. Text, let's do name Paul, then text country England, and then text uh, pets Luna and Aria. Now, if I want to have these three all have a title font. Of course, I could add title, title, title as modifiers, or I could wrap them in a group like this and say the whole group has the font of title. And the great thing here is this group has not affected any layout. It contains no layout information. So we don't know whether these three text fields will be stacked horizontally, vertically, or even by depth. This is where the transparent layout behavior of group becomes important. Whatever parent places the group into the view hierarchy gets to decide how those text views get arranged. For example, we can make a content view down here by saying something like uh, uh, at state private var layout vertically is false. And then our body down here, I could say there's a group. And if we're laying out vertically, I want a V stack with a user view inside. And if we're not laying out vertically, I want to say as a, v, a H stack, sorry, with another user view inside. So different orientations. And we have a group here again because we can now attach an on tap gesture right here saying layout vertically dot toggle. And that wouldn't be possible without the group. The group is what lets us attach to hang those uh, modifiers onto. So we can't put them onto simple conditions like this. And so this is gonna flip between horizontal and vertical layout depending on whether we tap the screen or not. So right now you can see it's horizontal and I tap it, it's vertical, horizontal, vertical like that. And it's really nice. We attach it once right here and get the whole thing responding to the same gesture. Now you might wonder, how often you need to have alternative layouts like this? Where's, where's the point in having a VSAC and a HDAC for the same layout? But the answer is it's really common because it's exactly what you want to happen when you're trying to write code that works across any kind of screen size. If you want layout to happen vertically when the width is constrained, otherwise do it horizontally. And Apple provides a very simple solution for this called size classes, which are there thoroughly vague way of telling us how much space we have for our view layouts. And when I say thoroughly vague, I mean it. We only have two size classes, horizontally and vertically, called compact and regular. That's it. That covers all screen sizes and orientations from the largest iPad Pro in landscape with a full screen given to it, down to the smallest iPhone in portrait, regular and compact. That doesn't mean it's useless, far from it just that it only lets us reason about our layouts in the very broadest terms. And to show off size classes in action, we can make a view that has a property to track the current size class and display it somehow using our user view, whether it's portrait or landscape. So we'll say up here, let's remove this at state and instead get our layout information from a size class. So we'll do at environment backslash dot horizontal, uh, horizontal, size class, boom, there we go, is var size class. And now our layout, I can remove the group entirely because no more tap gesture required. And instead, our condition becomes if our size class is equal to dot compact. So if we're limited in our horizontal space, use a V stack, otherwise use a H stack. And with that in place, we should find uh, our layout will adapt automatically between orientations. So now it's vertical and then it's still vertical because this is an iPhone 13 Pro. The system knows, wait a minute, this hasn't got a lot of space, a 13 Pro. A 13 Pro Max, the, the larger version, which is the largest iPhone you can get right now, or pretty much any iPad, I think, as long as the screen is you know not in split, split view or slide over or similar, when you've got lots and lots of space on iPad, 
again, you've got a big screen, you'll be uh, in regular mode. So here we have vertical, we're in compact mode, landscape, boom. It's a max size device, it changes to be a HDAC automatically, whereas in our other one down here, it was staying in vertical no matter what. So a size class is automatically taken care of for us by iOS. We don't really wanna think about how much space do I have? It's done for us by device, by orientation, by context and iPad. It's very, very clever. I would say in simple situations like this, you can actually optimize your code slightly more because uh, this closure, again, you can just pass the initializer of our user view directly to the vStack. You could have said vStack content is user view dot init like that, just to remove the extra bit of code. So again, content is user view dot init. Boom. I know short code isn't everything, but this technique is pleasingly concise, so I recommend it, um, particularly if you have this sort of group layout going on here. Anyway, regardless of whether we're toggling our layout using size classes or tap gestures, the point of all this is that our user view just doesn't care. It has no idea how those text views are being laid out. It doesn't want to know how they're being laid out. That's been decided for it elsewhere. This thing just groups the three text views together somehow without affecting their layout at all. So the layout that's decided for user view depends entirely on how it's being used, in this case, by our content view.